Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to Joyful Living. Today is a very special creator update where I'm giving you an overview of 2019, letting you know some things I did right, some things I did really wrong, and a few things that I'm excited about coming up in 2020 on both of my YouTube channels, and I'm really glad that you're here. So um, a lot of you that watch the creator updates are YouTube creators. And um, if you are just joining me and you don't know anything about my journey, I will put a link right here to my entire YouTube creator library. I started this over on my main channel. It's now migrated over here. And I literally started month one when I think I had 30 subscribers. So you can literally go watch. I think there's 10 or 12 or maybe 15 videos in that series where you watch my growth month to month. We walked through getting monetized. We walked through doing sponsored videos, working with brands, so many things that have happened to me that I actually documented and that's been a big deal. So as I was going back over 2019, I'm kind of trying to prepare for taxes and things like that. I felt like it was a really good time to do a new creator update from the perspective of where I am now, almost two years into my YouTube journey, both because I think it might help other YouTube creators, but also even if you're not a YouTube creator, you might find this information really interesting. So let's start with the good that happened in 2019. Uh, we saw the channel, uh, my main channel, Jen LaForge, hit 1 million views. Uh, we saw us hit 10,000 subscribers on that channel. I started this channel that you're watching this video on, and that was really born out of a desire to do more than just Disney content and knowing that it would probably be best for the algorithm to have the two things separated out. So over here on Joyful Living, I'm able to really kind of flex my creativity. Um, I still haven't quite found my groove on Joyful Living yet, but I love that this space exists. And there are 2,600 subscribers over here, and you guys are helping to inform what this channel should look like. So super, super proud of this second channel. Um, we also saw amazing growth. I actually tripled my YouTube YouTube income this year, which sometimes I tend to look because, you know, we all do this, right? I look at the numbers and I go, it doesn't seem like a lot for how hard I work, but I've tripled my income. And I don't know a lot of people that can say they've tripled their income in one year. So we're putting that in the, you know, really good job column. It also will end up in the opportunity column, but we're going to get to that at the end of the video. I also produced, and I had to write it down, I had to actually go and count, I produced 146 videos on the main channel and 52 videos on the second channel that is in one year. That represents a whole lot of work, a whole lot of editing, a whole lot of coming up with ideas, coming up with topics, writing out scripts, and really trying to find content that would bring value to you guys and that would actually kind of bring you some joy and happiness. So um, there's so much that goes into each and every video. I always try to bring you my best self. And so I know how much work all of that represents. And I'm really, really proud of that. Another really great thing that I did this last year was what I'm wearing. We have merchandise. And the merch actually now on the main channel, because I passed 10,000 subscribers, there's actually a banner that shows up and people can order my merch right from there, which blows my mind. Um, and I will put a link up here and also in the description box below if you want to support the channel in that way. That has become a great income stream for me and a really great way for people to just kind of show their support. Um, I saw my first bit of my own merch in the parks. I've had people send me some pictures of themselves wearing my merch in the parks, and that is unbelievably, um, what's the word? Surreal. Let me just say that. Never, never thought I would see that day come. So this sweatshirt that I'm wearing, I absolutely love. You may want to size up if you want it really cozy. That's, I think this one is a, um, a large that I normally would wear a medium, but I like to wear it with leggings and things like that. You can also buy a coffee cup and stickers and all that kind of stuff. So really proud of my merchandise. Also this year, I started my LLC. So uh, Vesta Productions is the name of my LLC. It is named after my great grandmother, who I never knew, but I learned a ton about when I did our family history. And I really, um, that name and starting the LLC is, is a really big deal for me. And I could not be prouder of that. 
overall great year. Oh, I know the other thing I did that I was proud of, I launched my Patreon page. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Patreon is a website where people can go on and support uh, creators that they love. And what Patreon has done for me is it's not only given me people that I really now consider my friends because they not only support me financially, they encourage me, they help me with decisions, they are really my board of directors, um, but also the financial support they give me has given me the freedom to branch out and do some things I never would have had the courage to do because I would have been so focused on trying to get the income in just to support the work that I'm doing. So that's probably been the biggest boost for my creativity. And on days when I'm just kind of tired and not motivated, I think about those 85 patrons that not only enjoy my content, but enjoy it enough that they are giving me money every month. And that, that is incredibly motivating. So if you are watching this and you are one of my patrons, I want to say thank you. And if you'd like to become a patron, of course, I'll put a link here and down in the description box that tells you how you can get that done. There were also some things I did this year that I mean, it's not that I'm not proud of them. They were There were some honest mistakes in there. There were some things that I wish that I hadn't done. And you know, as always in life, those are the things that other people tend to learn from the most. So let's start with things that I bought that I wish I had not. Hold please, I actually have a whole little basket here. There's only two things in it, it's not too bad. The first thing that I bought that I wish I had not is this Osmo Pocket. Now, let me tell you, I did a whole, you know, kind of box opening initial review of this little puppy. I don't even know if it has any charge in it. I haven't used it in a while. Oh, she does. This is a great little camera. And if I were, you know, if I had little kids and I wanted to do that kind of recording or whatever, this is not a bad little camera. However, I am not happy with the color that comes out of this camera. Um, every time, every clip that I use, I have to color correct. And I'm really not happy with how small the viewfinder is and just kind of the functionality of it. I thought I would love it. I do not love it. So I feel like this was a waste of money for me because I've only used it like three times and I just, um, I have not, use this the way that I hope that I, I've watched video after video about how to use it. But the reality is I, I just am not using it. So anything that you buy that you're not actually using is probably, you know, just not that good of a, of a deal for you. Also, I don't even know how to put it away in the thing. Oh, I'm putting it away backwards. That would help. Ha <laughs> ha. So this was a purchase that I wish I had not made. I went through a, a phase this year where somehow I thought that because my numbers were getting up there that I needed to turn into some kind of, you know, videographer whiz that I'm just not. And then I realized that you guys don't watch me because my video quality is so good or my shots are so fantastic. You watch me because you like me and you like the places I go and you like that I take you with me and that I share what's on my mind and I don't really need more equipment to make that happen. So this was a purchase that I wish I had not made. Oh, I forgot to add in the positive column. A purchase that I'm glad I made, however, is this camera that I'm filming on right now, and that is the Canon EOS M50. Now, I will put a link to everything I'm mentioning. Those will be Amazon affiliate links. However, if you are a YouTuber buying equipment, I do not encourage you to buy through Amazon, and here's why. Feel free to use the links to look at the products, but buy through a local camera store where you can return it. Um, Amazon has very limited return policies, and a, the next item I'm gonna show you, had I bought it through a local camera store, or even through like Fry's or something, or Best Buy, I could have returned it, but as it was, I, I used it for more than 30 days and I couldn't return it, and I'm very unhappy with it. So don't, don't buy anything through those links unless you're just somewhere where you don't have a camera store and then feel free. Um, but I will show you, this is the other purchase I made. Oh, sorry, I digress. The camera that I'm happy that I bought, Canon EOS M50. So the Canon EOS M50 is, is a little bit uh, more um, serious camera than the cameras that I've been vlogging on up until now, but it has a fantastic mic input and I also bought the um, Rode microphone that is on it right now. So it has really upped my game when I'm filming here at home. Both the video and the audio has improved greatly. Um, of course, it could always be better, but I was, I'm was i definitely happy with this. The other thing it enabled me to do was have a setup in my studio, which normally is downstairs and just have it set up all the time so that there's not a lot of prep time for me to be able to sit down and film a video. And really, if you're, if you want to upload often on YouTube, 
the very first name of the game is make sure that your system is really quick to set up. Because if you only have an hour, if it takes you 45 minutes to set up your equipment, then you know you don't. You only have 15 minutes to film. So um, have loved, loved, loved this camera. Also the light ring that it is sitting on, I have loved, and that has really helped me be able to film in different areas of my house. Like right now, we're up in my bedroom. It's a very cloudy day. There's not a lot of great light in here, but the light ring has enabled me to, um, yeah, to still film in places I normally normally wouldn't film and still get really good light. So I'll put that in the link below. In here is the other thing that I wish I had not purchased. And this really bums me out because I had high hopes for this camera, but that is the Mark G7X3. Now I had the Mark G7X2. That was my main go-to vlogging camera. I loved that camera, loved that camera. Unfortunately, I don't know if I dropped it or what, but the microphone broke on it. And because it does not have an external mic port, I couldn't use it anymore. There was like this weird clicking noise and it was just unusable. So I bought the three, super excited about it. The autofocus on this, and yes, I have done the firmware update, is, is not good. Um, I tried to do, and I'll put the link to the video here if you wanna go watch it. I tried to film when I was um, on the cruise with my mom, like an interview with the two of us, and it could not find focus. It kept going out of focus, it was driving me crazy, and that's the last thing you wanna be worried about when you're trying to vlog is, uh, wait, are we in focus, are we in focus? That's just not something I ever had to worry about with a Mark II. And although the Mark III does a really decent job, like if I'm out in theme parks and things like that, um, so it's not a total wash, but I am not at all happy with the autofocus, especially when I have it in selfie mode and I'm filming myself and or another person. It just hunts and it's, it's kind of a train wreck. If I had the ability, I would return this. Um, I'm actually considering buying another Mark II because I love the Mark II that much. And you can actually pick those up right now for around $400. Um, so yeah, in fact, when I'm done with this video, I may go do that because I'm super sad that I'm going into my next Disney trip without a smaller point and shoot that I'm really, really happy with. And the EOS M50 that I'm filming on is a little too bulky for me for the parks. So Anyway, this was not a good purchase and I'm sorry that I purchased it. And I'm, I don't, you know, people don't give me stuff for free. I buy it with my, on my own money, with my own business money, with my patrons money. And um, it just wasn't a good purchase. So I may try to sell this um, on eBay and see if I can recoup some of that loss. Um, but that's okay because um, I did make some good purchases. I did make some good investments. And I think that everyone who's starting out as a YouTuber is going to make a few, you know, you're going to have some things that you purchase that you're like, I, I don't know why I felt the need to purchase that item. So um, also, I guess that was a little mini review of the Mark G7X3. Another, not regret, but another little misstep I had this last year is I worked with some brands that I wish I hadn't. Um, I did do some sponsored videos with a company that I really believe in, and that was all well and good. And then I branched off, and I'm not gonna name the names of the companies because I do, I would never do a video for you guys if I didn't believe in the product, and I still do like the products that I brought to you guys, but I was not happy with the working relationship. I felt like, um, I, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like spo doing sponsored videos. I don't like when a company sends me product for free and then I say it's an honest review and I'm like, well, is it really? Because they sent it to me for free and you do feel an obligation. I will always do honest reviews, but I just was feeling that tension. I don't like feeling that tension. I, uh, I'm at the stage now, or just to be really honest with you, I get a lot of emails. A lot of people want to send me products and have me do videos about them. And I'm not feeling okay about that. So what I have decided to do for 2020, and this is just a really dumb idea, I know, but it's, it's where my heart's at and I've been thinking about this for a while. Um, I'm going to do probably no sponsored videos or product reviews or anything in, in 2020. Um, I'm, I just want to quiet all that down. If I bring you guys a review of something, I want you to know that I actually bought it with my own money and I'm bringing it to you because I'm really excited about it, not because somebody sent it to me or because I have an affiliate link. Um, there are a lot of influencers out there that make a lot of money and I more power to them. This is not in any way to disparage anyone and how they make their living, but that's not how I want to make money on YouTube by, by selling other people's products. I just don't. I just don't. So part of it is that I'm kind of 
leaning more towards minimalist. I don't want to encourage people to buy things that they don't need, but um, it's also just a heart thing for me. So um, yeah, I, that is like goal number one for 2020 is to not do any sponsored videos. Now, if I'm not going to do any sponsored videos, then I really do need to try to up my other income streams because I do hope to again, double and maybe even triple my income in 2020 over 2019. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to get really creative and I'm going to have to work really hard, especially if I'm not going to do sponsored content or reviews. So some of my goals are to think about, um, you know, maybe another income stream. So right now my income streams are my merchandise that I sell. Obviously Patre uh, Patreon is an income stream for me. Google AdSense is an income stream for me. Amazon affiliates, I've really backed off really pushing stuff with you guys. So that's a little bit of income, but we're talking, you know, at this point, maybe 30 bucks a month. So really nothing to write home about. But I do need to figure out another income stream, and I'm not sure if that should be an ebook, if that should be an e course. Um, I, I'm really thinking that through. So that's another one of my goals for 2020 is to really examine that and figure out what I could do. And then lastly, I hope by the end of 2020 to be in a position where I can make one higher. That's, that would be brilliant because I am, you know, I think every small business owner gets to that place where the business is going well, but you're starting to feel like it could be going much better if you could duplicate yourself. And I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know if that's the form of a virtual assistant, if that's the form of an intern, uh, but I definitely can sense that there is a lot of growth and momentum I could achieve if I could get a little bit of help and not be chief cook and bottle washer here at at Vesta Productions. So um, that's kind of my own like secret goal by the end of the year. I would really love to have an additional hire. So lastly, I just want to say, uh, those of you that look at YouTube and feel like people have like overnight success, uh, this has been two full years for me and um, I have not grown like some people have. You know, some people, you'll see these videos, you know, two years and 500,000 subscribers. I have, however, grown sure and steady. I've had good months, I've had bad months. I've had great performing videos and videos that have just flatlined. And that game of it and the algorithm and the adventure is honestly one of the things I love most about this platform. So this video really for me is not only just to take stock of what we did last year and also look at my mistakes from last year, but also to look forward to what I hope is a very exciting encouraging, joyful, and yes, even prosperous future for my channel. And also as I bring you guys along that you will feel better about having spent some time in my little space on the internet. Again, if you're not subscribed, please make sure you do that. Press those bell notifications so that you don't miss a thing and comment below if this was helpful today. I'm so glad you were here and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.